Hi everyone, I'm Donna Louise and welcome to my YouTube channel for the love of puzzles. Today we continue our journey as we travel around art, the current largest commercially available jigsaw puzzle in the world from Graphica. If you haven't seen the other videos that I've done in this series, I'll leave all the links in the description below. I suggest you at least watch the unboxing video just to get an overview of this jigsaw puzzle. I'm excited today because it's bag number eight and I'm going to do another bookshelf section. So bag number eight and it's actually section 17, another bookshelf section designed by Mathieu Martin. And if you saw the last bookshelf section, I mentioned that I was going to reach out to him and ask him some questions. And guess what? He got back to me. So for this video, the voiceover will be me talking about Mathieu's responses to my questions. I love this bookshelf section. Again, lots of ornate books, lots of colors, lots of other objects. I'm worried it does have a lot more brown than the last section because there's not the chair in it but we'll just make our way through it slowly. If we pull out our panoramic poster of the entire puzzle, trying to get an angle without too much glare, you can see on the wall behind me, I have these first six sections right here. As for the opposite end, that's where the bookshelf appears. I've already done the lower section. Now I'm doing the one that sits above it. So there, I'm excited. I want to say thank you already to Mathieu for getting back to me and answering my questions. Listen to the voiceover to see what he had to say of his experience designing the bookshelf for this jigsaw puzzle. Now, I already thought, what am I going to do for the voiceovers for the next two bookshelf sections? That's where you come in. I'm going to do a Q&A. So stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll explain to you how you can ask me your questions and I'll use them as voiceovers for the next two bookshelf sections. So for the love of puzzles, let's get going on bag number eight, which is section 17 as we travel around art. We were introduced to Mathieu Martin when I completed the first bookshelf section. That was the fourth bag that I had done and it's numbered section 26. Mathieu is a freelance illustrator who was hired by Graphica to do the four bookshelf sections. Now I asked him how long it took to do these sections and he replied that he had worked for two months on the project. I also asked if he chose what extra items to include on the bookshelf. For example, in this section you see like the sand timer and in the previous section we saw the globe. He replied that he did not select any of the items. The editor sent him a list of things to include with references. Now I'm assuming what he means by references are perhaps pictorial references. So like here's a picture of an old timey telephone and he designed um, the items based on those references. So he followed the instructions provided by the editor. He told me that this was a pretty cool project, not just because he was being paid, but also because it was the first time that he worked on a jigsaw puzzle. And in that respect, he said it was quite original. So that's just a little insight into Mathieu's work on this project. And I really appreciate him answering my questions. I've included the links to his website and Instagram in the description below, so please go check out his work. Now, I still have two more bookshelf sections to complete, and I have an idea what to do for their voiceovers. I'm reaching out to you, my viewers, asking you to leave your questions for me in the comments below. Yes, we're going to have Q&A voiceovers for the next two bookshelf sections. You can ask me about this puzzle, other puzzles. You can ask me about myself in general. I may not answer any super personal questions though, but you can always ask. I won't answer your question in the comments, but I'll make it clear that I've seen it and it's noted for the voiceover. Hopefully this is something that you will all enjoy, but as always, you're more than welcome to mute me. <laughs> now the first thing I'm definitely going to address is what exactly is my first name and how do you spell it? <laughs> so wait for that, I know, so exciting. But I'm looking forward to reading your questions and to answering them in the next two bookshelf sections. Thank you. 
I'm going to try to record this without being too shaky, but I had to stop puzzling for a minute because I realized that this edge right here has uh, just heaps of false fits. It's all messed up to the point where I don't even know now what goes where. I knew when I had put them in, it didn't look like the beige was lining up with the dark brown. I thought that was just how maybe it was perhaps printed. But now that I'm finding pieces from definitely, you know, the puzzle that go in those spots and they're not matching up. So I'm just going to, I just pulled it all out. As you can see, I'll wait till I get more of the inside pieces done and I'll try to figure it out. But to tell you the truth, the beige pieces, I may have to wait until I connect this section to the section next to it to this side of it to see if they're actually all in the right place. And this is one reason why I don't permanently um, glue this puzzle until it's all done and I know that everything's in the right spot. I won't be able to do that. But the other reason why when people said, oh, why don't you mix all the bags? This is a neat, another reason why not to mix all the bags. I have confirmed with Graphica that it is cut using the same um, pattern. And so you are increasing your chances of false fits and just making your life miserable. So for now, we'll just leave that all off to the side and keep working on the rest of this lovely bookshelf section. So beautiful.
and another section is done. I really enjoy doing the bookshelf sections. It just, it's breaking up the puzzle nicely. It's something different and it's beautiful. These sections are absolutely beautiful. Now I have some notes. It took me 12 hours and 52 minutes. The previous bookshelf section took me 15 hours and 10 minutes. So that's an improvement of like, what, what's that? Two hours and 18 minutes, like two hours, 20 minutes about. So I feel that's a significant improvement. And I wonder if that's because of two things. One, there wasn't the chair. And for some reason, I found that chair quite tricky. And in the next bookshelf section that I do, there's also another big armchair that's white and gray. So we'll see how that goes. But the other reason why I think I was a lot faster is just the experience. One with the puzzle, with the pieces, with having done already a bookshelf section. I'm familiar kind of like with the browns. And to tell you the truth, although there's a lot of brown pieces, they are nowhere near as tricky as those beige background pieces. Because the brown in the bookshelf section, there are you know, lines between the shelves and, and the borders of of everything, of the sides of the bookshelf and, you know, the, what's that called? Like the little, the lines that make it look like it goes in, you know, the aspect lines or whatever you call them. Every brown piece actually has a lot of detail, which if you just take the time and look, which I don't mind doing, it was actually quite quite easy, enjoyable to do. I'd rather do, you know, the brown from the bookshelf sections over a lot of beige <laughs> background sections any day. So I felt, yeah, I was quite pleased with my time on this, quite shocked. So I would say this is like an easy section, maybe easy to medium, but, but really, you know, it wasn't difficult. That's for sure. Now, what else did I want it to say? Oh, if you notice also what I did with the brown is I laid at the end, you saw how I laid out all the brown pieces on two white pieces of paper so they could stand out and see them. I could see like the different shades and tones in the brown. And also, you know, what I call my tall pieces versus my wide pieces. I know which directions they go. I did, you know, sometimes pick up a piece and try to find where it went look at the prong shapes, but I also did remove a piece from the puzzle, like I talked about in my last section, and just tried against those pieces on the white pieces of paper. And it was quite faster and easy to find which piece went next to it doing it that way. So that's a, my new method. Whoever I saw do that, thank you. I don't know who you are. I'm sure I saw someone do that or someone told me about it. I just can't remember, but genius. I'm just gonna say genius. Now, you saw in the middle of the video, I talked about that other, that edge that has some background beige pieces. Wow, that was tricky. So tricky because it's so close, the fit of those pieces. They almost feel like they can go multiple places. And really, I had done that side, the beige and the first line of brown. I had to take it all apart. It was actually completely wrong because once I started putting the inside puzzle pieces, nothing fit. So I had to rework that whole section. Another reason, like I talked about, the reason why I only temporary tape the puzzle, I don't glue it. And in fact, until I like tried to assemble this to a section next to it, there could well still be a false fit. As we saw, putting this up on the wall, I had false fits along that edge and I only noticed it once I stood back and tried to put two sections next to one another that it didn't go well together. So false fits along the edge, particularly down the vertical, seem to be, you know, high likelihood here. So ye, proceed with caution is what I'm telling myself. But I got it, I think it's fine now. I'll only be able to confirm once I try to put it to the section next to it. Now, what else? I'm going to wait to all four bookshelf sections are done to put them all together to do a big reveal of the four bookshelf sections. The reason for that is I don't want to stress the prongs too much. So we'll just do one good reveal. And also it's just a lot of work to haul them all out and move them all around. But you'll see that this is still up on the wall. Those poster strips from 3M Command are knock on wood, amazing. Literally wood, bookshelf wood and table wood. 
it's still up it's doing great the only thing I did which you can't see I did remove two top sections the one where the bubble was uh, and I think that was due to those false fits it was just stressing the pieces a bit I probably should take down the corner pieces that are still bent but it looks good I mean I hope I'm not ruining the puzzle or stressing them or permanently bending them each piece is small enough that I hope the overall slight curve is not doing any permanent damage but I'm so pleased it's been up on the wall now for like a week it's great and I, I just love it I think it's beautiful and yeah it maybe looks funny with those top two sections missing but you can't see that on camera so it's okay I just want to thank you say thank you again to Mathieu for answering my questions and giving us a bit of insight and information on his work that he did on the bookshelf sections I really appreciate that and I did leave a link to his website and Instagram in the description below so go check out his work what else oh now if you listen to the voiceover you'll know that I asked to please leave your questions for me in the comments below because for the next two bookshelf sections I'm going to do Q&A voiceovers so you can ask me about this puzzle other puzzles you can ask about me in general like I said in the voiceover I may not answer like super personal questions but I'm a bit of an open book my there's nothing exciting here people I have dogs I puzzle I live in New Zealand I love my hubby that's about it <laughs> that's me in a nutshell but yeah so leave your questions in the comments below I won't answer them but I'll make sure you see that it's noted for the voiceover and I'll use those questions to do the voiceovers for the next two bookshelf sections like I said though you can always mute me if you want okay now here's some exciting things I've completed eight bags like it's happening like I'm getting there I have 19 bags to go less than 20 bags you know you starting such a big large project it's a bit daunting and overwhelming but I'm doing it I'm getting there I'm I'm pleased I'm, I'm not gonna lie I'm proud of myself eight bags completed so that's 16,000 pieces the total time that I've worked on these 16,000 pieces that includes sorting and assembly doesn't include the video processing which in some cases does take quite a bit of time it's been exactly hundred and nine hours give or take a few minutes here or there now hundred and nine hours translates to approximately 4.5 days so if I were to start and not stop four and a half days is how long it's taken me to assemble eight bags in total so I think that's that's really good I think that's a really good pace now when you watch this video it will have already been recorded maybe two weeks in advance I try to work two weeks in advance just so I have enough stuff to release bi-weekly I hope I can keep up that pace to release videos on Tuesday and Friday which may be Monday and Thursday evenings for many of you but if I continue at this pace I may actually finish this by the end of the year which means I'm on track to hopefully fully do a display mid-January which is what I want to do and that's right in the middle of our summer great time and so I'm I'm not gonna lie I'm pleased I love the puzzle I love all the information I'm learning about the paintings and the artists I love the bookshelf I love that they did something a bit different I love the the sections along the floor which will be a section that I do next I am so pleased that so many viewers are enjoying this journey watching commenting asking questions I just love it I really appreciate every single one of you thank you so much for helping my channel grow and supporting my videos you know I do this because I love it seriously that's why I call it for the love of puzzles but it it's becoming so much more it's so very rewarding to know that people are actually enjoying my content and watching it it means it means so much to me so thank you so much for being here for the love of puzzles I hope you enjoy my videos please consider subscribing and until next time ciao